welcome darling friends wish you all a very happy new year for all those who have just joined in my name is Amrita Ram and in this video today we're going to start with something really positive to welcome a beautiful gorgeous 2018 so we are going to talk about 10 highly effective yet mindful ways of handling our little children and their tantrums <music> guru but this video is just a hearty chat from one mom to the other and I'm picking up my 10 absolute favorite ones based on a couple of books that I absolutely love and plus obviously the experience of raising my own child since this is such a vast topic I'm gonna to break it down into two videos so today we are going to talk about the first five strategies and next week for the second video we're gonna cover the remaining five so let's get started rightly said that parenting isn't a project or a practice it is daily learning experiences and I think all of us can relate to it parenting is not a one-size-fits-all before we even dive in I wanted to touch upon two really important facts first is triggers haven't you observed that children behave right when they internally feel right so before you even conclude that what is causing the tantrum check for the basic needs needs like you know hunger thirst sleep uh, separation anxiety stranger anxieties and second is preparation of adult and I think this is equally important too for me I know uh, I'm better equipped to handle my son when I am mentally and physically happy so see what will make you happy it can be small little things like you know not skipping meals or uh, giving yourself that 10 minute of yoga break uh, I really leave that to you because it's such a personal thing but I think these two things are really important to consider even before we discuss on the strategies okay so now that we have some amount of foundation laid out let's talk about the first five strategies uh, some of them are my absolute favorites the first one I would say is acknowledging your child's feelings so gently assuring the child that we are with them in this okay that we understand that they're upset or they are sad giving feelings a name always helps because that way we are talking with a language of empathy instead of just shrugging them off and then giving those wishes in fantasy so for example your child wants a chocolate cake for lunch and obviously you don't want to give it to him so you just say that I know you're upset right now and I wish I had a magic wand to make that chocolate cake up here you know just make it fun and you know keep saying yes to the child but no to the behavior i feel that really helps to keep the situation a little bit peaceful number two creating consistent yet realistic boundaries for your children and new year is a great way uh, to form certain house rules so again this is a very personal choice but you can make house rules like um, we use only kind words in our house or we don't use hands for hitting. I think part of truly loving our children also means helping them understand what's permissible and what's not and that's why creating certain realistic consistent boundaries always helps and with consistent boundaries I feel repeated experiences really matter because little children need that reiteration they need to be gently reminded so uh, that's one thing that you should keep in mind I get a lot of questions from moms asking if mindful respectful parenting is about absence of boundaries and limits and in fact it's just the opposite okay so uh, having consistent respectful boundaries is really going to help uh, your son and your children of course number three modeling the behavior children are going to imitate us and hence if we want them to do something we have to get involved in that process so for example you want your child to clear the toy mess you have to show them how to do it because for them it's going to be so overwhelming so, so for example your child is playing with blocks and you want him to clear you have to get up you have to show him I know it sounds like a lot of work um, but consider it as more work now for better results later okay so you have to get up and show that these are the blocks you have to pick them up this is the bin or the tray you have to put them back here okay so you model the behavior that way the child is seeing 
what he has to do and he's going to pick up your cues. This is also a great opportunity for us to teach children how to make amends. For example, the child spills milk or water on the floor. So instead of shouting or yelling at him, uh, we can say, oh, I see the milk is spilled on the floor. Let me give you a cloth so you can wipe it off. So little small things, but can really help us to, you know, handle children with more of love, less of drama. Number four, creating a mindful peace corner at home for your children. This wonderful theory is Montessori inspired and you really don't need a lot of space or a big table to set it up. Make do with whatever you have at home. The purpose of Peace Corner is to have a safe, inviting place for little children in order to help them calm down through love, respect and patience. Now as the name suggests, it's a place not just for conflict resolution but also for nurturing our bond with our little children while instilling the values of peace, quiet, calm and mindfulness. So this is a perfect place where you can talk about their feelings, you can problem solve and you can bond over a fun little activity. So um, for place you can choose any little space, corner or drawer of your home and have activities that help create a sense of calm, a sense of peace within the child. And then you can of course rotate the activities as per your child's interest. Dress. we have a little timer a bell couple of you know storybooks coloring books so make do with whatever you have at home and keep it child led you know keep it according to your child's interest and teach the child beforehand the importance of this piece corner and the items in it so let it be a really special place separate from your usual toy area some moms from my Facebook group have been super kind enough to share a snippet of their peace corners. So let's have a look at that one by one. The first picture here is by Bindu Bhavani of Our Little Fun Place. And she has set up a really calming, inviting peace corner for her little son. I'm going to put all the links down below of their YouTube channels, Facebook pages, websites. So you can have a closer look at that. One more beautiful idea is to have nature table as your peace corner as set up by Guhu Gupta from K Junction. She set up a really walled off inspired peace corner for her son. You can also get super creative here. Nandita from Sunshine Mama has set up a corner for her son with a DIY washing machine and a kitchen. How cute is that? Divya Rajiv has set up this really nice piece corner for her daughter with few of her favorite books and drawing supplies. You can also set up a cozy reading nook as your piece corner. As you can see here, Kajal Darul from Vitamin Simple has set up this beautifully cozy reading nook for her little girl. You can add bean bags and rugs and soft pillows just the way Sri Lata has done here to make the reading corner look nice, comfortable and cozy. Apanna Chari Sundar has set up this really functional art carry for her little children and I feel art is such a beautiful mood elevator. Apple Satsangi has put together a peace corner for her son which comprises a few of his favorite activities like a balancing moon, scale, a timer with blue sand and dropping games. Nandini of Pages from Serendipity has set up this beautiful piece corner for her children which has some beautiful wooden musical instruments and few learning quiet time activities. And for Pratisha, it's all about sitting beside this beautiful windowsill drinking a cup of coffee while her child is enjoying some quiet time. So there's no one way of creating a peace corner for your little children. Do what you think will work best for them and your home setup. And now let's move on to the last strategy of the day. Number five, and this is currently our most used strategy, and that is using humor, being silly, being fun. So as parents, it's also important to loosen up a bit. So make up fun, silly games, laugh it off and get your child to cooperate instead of taking life too seriously. Those 
those were my top five picks i will also talk about five remaining strategies next week so make sure you subscribe to my channel so you get the notification for the next week's video if you want further reading if you want to dive into this um, in detail you can join my facebook group i have an entire project created called mindful mondays where we discuss about respectful peaceful parenting but the reason why i really wanted to make this video series and keep it so relatable light and simple is because i want to let you guys know that we have each other's back we all are in the exact same boat of parenting and we keep needing that gentle reminders and gentle reiterations i know i need it all the time so i hope you guys enjoyed watching this video if you did don't forget to hit that thumbs up button hit the notification bell and the subscribe button so that i can catch you guys in my next video bye for now happy parenting Thank you.